Hello, everyone. Daniel here from the Next Issue Podcast. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, a review for the movie Demon Slayer, the movie Mugen Train. Uh, this is a recently released movie here in the States. The movie was released in Japan a little while back. It is um, it is an arc of the Demon Slayer saga, so all this stuff takes place after season one. Uh, if you're not familiar with Demon Slayer, uh, the plot pretty much follows our, our protagonist, Tanjiro, whose family is killed by a demon, uh, except for his sister, Nesuko, who is actually turned into a demon. So now not only is he in the path to avenge his family and find the demon that killed them, but also to try to get his sister uh, a cure to uh, to make her human again. Um, now this, uh, and this will be, this first part of the review will be spoiler free. So feel free to stick around if you haven't watched the movie. Uh, and then I will make it very clear as I dive into actual spoilers. Um, so this movie, uh, it's pretty special in a few ways. Um, normally anime movies are not canon to the anime. Uh, you know, take for instance, all the. Dragon Ball Z movies that we got, there's only a few that are actually canon uh, with the series. Uh, same with uh, One Piece and stuff like that. Not only that, but this movie was, or is actually, the highest grossing movie in Japan as of as of release now here in the States uh, and as of recording this. So that's that already right there is pretty special. Um, also, like I mentioned, this is canon. It it follows the... It takes an arc from the manga, which is something that they haven't done before, really. They take on a smaller arc for the manga, and they decided to make an adaptation as a movie. Um, it follows roughly chapters 54, 55, maybe, to around 70, 69, 70. Um, I haven't read those issues yet, so I'm actually ahead in the anime. Uh, but you do have to, I would recommend you watching season one of Demon Slayer before jumping into the movie. Uh, otherwise, although it's such a, it's a, and I'll kind of reveal my hand here, it's a really good movie. Um, but you may be a little lost. Uh, another thing that kind of make this experience special, after 13 months of me not going to a movie theater, because this movie is only available in theaters at the moment in the U.S., um, I went to the movie theater. It was a whole experience. Um, luckily, the theater's doing some stuff to keep everyone safe and, you know, distance. Uh, I went on a Monday night, so it wasn't very packed either. I, I kind of waited out all, like, the hardcore fans that I could see. I could see on social media and on TikTok and stuff, like, you know, going to the movies. So I didn't want to go when it was too crowded. Uh, so it was definitely very nice to get that. That, theatr that theatrical experience once again. Uh, so that, all that stuff being said, like that definitely influences my review of this movie. Like, I think it's it's hard to review movies and I would not say I'm a critic at all. Like anybody that's seen any of the stuff I talk about, you guys know I'm pretty lenient and I like, I enjoy liking things uh, and I try to find the positive spin on everything. Um, so that being said, this movie, um, it takes place in a train. I love train movies, train heist, train mysteries, anything like that, right up my alley. Um, the movie contains one of the most beautifully animated fights I've ever seen in anime. And uh, at, at, as of this review, I'm currently watching Jujutsu Kaisen, who, if you're not familiar with, has some amazing fights. Uh, over the winter, I watch uh, God of High School, which is a Crunchyroll original, uh, which also has some really, really amazing fights. So that's really kind of set the bar for all this stuff. Um, I, like I mentioned, I, I am pretty familiar with with Demon Slayer. Um, I, I really enjoy the anime and now this movie because it it it, it kind of balances that line between comedy, adventure, fantasy. Uh, horror, like this movie is rated R, and there is a lot of gore and violence in it. 
uh, in the style of the anime. So you're from if you're familiar with that, uh, you will definitely get just more of that. Um, I really like the mythology that they're building in the world. Um, there, there is a little. The one thing that kind of knocked this movie down a little bit, and is this is just a tiny bit for me, was um, this is a 2D animation, as most manga. Uh, there is a bit of 3D animation or CG mixed in there with the normal animation. For the most part, I don't normally mind those kinds of things. In this case, it did bother me a little bit. I think it was maybe the coloring of the objects because... Uh, and I'll talk about it more in the spoiler piece of it. Um, but other than that, this movie is beautiful. Like, uh, you know, if you're familiar with the anime, uh, you see a lot of the forms and the different elements that the demon slayers use. Uh, so that's very cool. Uh, I think, I think overall, if you're caught up in season one, if you can safely watch this in a theater. I would recommend you go check this out. I don't think, I don't think you're gonna want to wait till this is out on demand. Um, like I said, this is, uh, this is out on theaters now. So if you can find it somewhere, you know, watch it with a group of people. If you're vaccinated, if you feel if you feel comfortable going to the movie theaters, I would recommend you make the trip. I believe this movie is super worth it. Uh, that being said, there was a snafu. Sony, uh, Sony leaked the movie, so. You know that that really sucks for them, uh, because that just means that a bunch of people will get a hold of this movie without having to go for it. So, but I encourage everyone go to this movie because movies like this, movies that are canon, movies that are big events in anime and animation, um, if if they are successful, like they have been, the the past few movies that I've seen, uh, Dragon Ball Z, uh, Dragon Ball Super Broly. Uh, My Hero Academia, um, I think it's two heroes. Uh, and then this in, in, in other anime movies, like the bigger the splash they make in the United States, the more the more that these studios will take a chance in putting it out earlier. So we don't have to wait like six months. This movie has been out in Japan forever now. Uh, and most of these anime movies, like they take so long to happen here in the States because they don't believe there's a public and a, an audience for it. And and we want to show them that there is. So, you know, um, vote with your dollar, people. Get your anime in the theaters. Uh, it's definitely an event. It's a spectacle. Uh, all right. That being said, as of this point, now uh, we will go into spoilers. Here's your spoiler alert. This is your last chance. If you're leaving us, thanks for watching. Come back when you've seen the movie. Like, share, and subscribe, obviously. Um, so let's go into spoilers, not only for the movie, but, you know, maybe season one as well of Demon Slayer. Uh, and I haven't read the manga, so I don't know what happens in the story after this. So I'll, I'll only talk about things that happened either in season one or or here during this movie. Um, so we uh, the, the antagonist in this movie mainly is Enmu. Uh, Lower Moon 1, I believe, is his classification. We were introduced to this character at the end of Season 1. Uh, Enmu was given the blood of the main demon. I forget his name at the moment. Uh, but Enmu has a really cool power. Enmu's power is that he can make people dream. Um, and I saw, I saw a few things here. Um, a few influences because of this, because of the the dream motif and the the dream scenarios throughout the movie. Um, first of all, the the dreams uh, they have a little bit of an inception logic to them, because like there are you can tether yourself to uh, to the to the people that are dreaming. Um, I guess I should kind of go back a little bit. Uh, so this movie. As we saw at the end of season one, uh, Tanjiro, Nesuko, Inosuke, and uh, Senitsu are all boarding the train uh, to figure out the mystery of why people are disappearing. And that's kind of the horror aspect of this movie, which I really like. Uh, if you see me looking away from the cameras, because I got a big, big pile of notes trying to keep my thoughts straight. Um, so, yeah, the dream, the dream element, it, it gives me like a. 
it starts out with with uh, anybody from the comics. There's a story by Alan Moore called "For the Man Who Has Everything," where the where Enmu gives the dreamer, the people that he wants to keep trapped, everything they desire for in their in their dreams to keep them docile and to you know to kind of like take them and and eventually kill them. Um, I think that's that's a super cool aspect of it. Uh, and like in the comic, the, the Superman comic, I really enjoy that. Enjoying seeing like inside of Tanjiro's soul, like what does he, what does he want the most? And of course it's his family because that's what kind of drives him through this whole anime. Um, in Osuke, uh, you see that he just wants to be the leader of the bunch. Uh, Sanitsu obviously just wants to hang out. Uh, be the ladies' man, be the confident dude. Uh, and then we are introduced to, or reintroduced to the Fire Hashira, who is Kyoraju Rengok Rengoku. Uh, he's the one with the fire hair. Uh, super cool dude. Um, I'll tell you this, the, the fire forms in this movie are some of the dopest animation I've seen in a long time. Um, so we, we get a lot of... Uh, Rengoku's backstory, uh, you know, the time with his dad, how he became the Hashira, why he became the Hashira, uh, why he's going to train as a demon slayer, and kind of what drives him as well. So this movie definitely gives you a really good backstory of everyone. Um, uh, like I mentioned, Tanjiro sees his family, and, and that one is probably the most, I want to say, tragic. I was going to say depressing, but it's definitely tragic because we know... As the viewer, that Tanjiro is in a dream, uh, and but we don't want to take that away from Tanjiro, right? We don't want to take his family away from him again. Um, and and Tanjiro kind of overcomes that uh, as as they begin to wake up. Nesuko wakes them up, or wakes him up to try to wake up everybody else. Um, but yeah, let's just Tanjiro dealing with the grief of having to leave his family all over again. Uh, it's it's very tragic. Uh, we we get a peek inside of their subconscious, and and this is one of the one of the parts where I see the, the one some of the best animation and some of the, just the most beautiful landscapes inside of obviously Tanjiro as our protagonist. He has he has a beautiful soul. He is a really good person, and that is also seen on the inside. Um, so yeah, he inside of Tanjiro, uh, we get to see that. Uh, we finally are Tanjiro is finally able to wake up, uh, and the team wakes up. They go confront Enmu. Um, Enmu has really cool powers because it's all about dream. He's kind of like a like a Freddy Krueger uh, type of demon, which is weird to say uh, now that I'm saying it out loud. But Enmu, uh, yeah, just his whole powers. He he has a really cool design. Uh, he got a bit of an upgrade since last time we saw him when when, we, when they got the blood. Mm, so that was, I like the designs. The character designs in this anime are magnificent, and and it's all thanks to the manga because the the manga is great. And let me while I while I keep talking, let me look up the name of the author of the manga because I forgot. I definitely forgot, and something we should definitely address. Um, but yeah, uh, Tanjiro. Confronts Enmu, and as they work to just try to get uh, everyone awake and try to keep everyone safe in the train, because the train's full of passengers, right? Um, so, so like they have to protect them. Koyaharu Gotouke, oh, sorry about that. Koyaharu Gotouke, he's the, uh, they're the creator of the manga. Um, this obviously published in Trying to Jump, which is really cool. Uh, so, you know, now that the manga is over, I'll probably go back and read it. But getting back to the movie, um, like I said, Tanjiro and the team are finally awake. They confront Enmu, and we get one of the coolest twists I've seen in something like this. Uh, and I, like I said, I already mentioned this is spoiler-filled, so if you don't want to hear the twist of this movie, there's two twists coming. This first one I'm going to reveal now, and then the next one. Uh, Tanjiro with... The the water forms in 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 this movie and the animation for the water forms 
is is they're amazing. Uh, I, that's one of my favorite things about the anime. Um, and in the in the movie and theater quality, they look even better. Uh, but Tanjiro kills Enmu, or he thinks he did. But Enmu reveals that that they are now fused with the train. And that twist is like, how do you kill a train? Which is something that, when you go back and think about it, Inosuke kind of was always like trying to attack the train because Inosuke doesn't understand what a train is and he's never seen one in real life. Um, uh, so they finally come up with a plan. They all meet up together uh, while they're keeping people safe. Uh, Inosuke and Tanjiro try to find the head of the demon to destroy it. As that's how you destroy demons in this world. Uh, so that's very cool. One of the things I also gotta, and I'll bring this up again because the the music in the this movie. We don't normally get actual like music and songs in in anime, but in anime movies, I feel like they always kind of go all the way out because it's an actual score for a movie, uh, as opposed to just the themes that we get uh, throughout an anime. So that always elevates the material a little bit especially i mean at least for me um the team finally defeats enmu uh they find the head now without tanjiro first being injured uh and and at this point at the theater i'm sitting there and it's like there's about 25 minutes left in this movie 25 to 30 like what's gonna happen because this movie is almost two hours long um and we get another reveal. We get one of the the upper moon, uh, upper moon number three, Akaza. Uh, he's revealed. So there's an extra, an additional demon. We had not seen any of this in the trailers. If you read the manga, obviously you knew that was coming. I had no idea that was coming. Um, and and uh, one thing I forgot to mention: when Enmu reveals that uh, the train is now part of him. Uh, that's the part where you see a lot of that 3D animation that I was not the biggest fan of. I think it's just the coloring. I don't know. There was something off about it because the the train train tentacles or whatever they they sprout eyes and those are really cool. Um, but anyways, back to the back to the fight. So obviously, Akaza's the the upper demons are all pretty powerful. Uh, so the so uh, Rengoku is the only one that would have. Any chance at taking him down? Uh, so we get. This is what I was mentioning at the beginning. One of the cool, like, uh, like it feels. It really feels like a movie. It doesn't just feel like another uh, episode. And no, I'm not ragging on watching just anime at home because I love it. I do it all the time. Uh, but, but this fight really brought this movie together. Like it, it solidified the story. It reiterated a lot of the themes about perseverance, loss, grief, uh, because everything happens. I won't go into details as to what happens after the movie. Uh, if you've made it this far without going to watch the movie and you're still watching, uh, I'll leave that part up to you. Um, but yeah, we get we get some of the just some amazing fighting. Uh, the movie comes to a close, and and I just I felt and like I said, I don't know if it's because it was my first time back at the theater uh, because it's an anime that I love. Or, or what what it might be, but I really enjoyed this experience. I would gladly go back to the theater and watch it again. Um, and I'll be buying this on uh, Blu-ray whenever it comes out. Uh, hopefully, I believe it should be streaming on Video On Demand in June, if I'm not mistaken. June or July, I think it's what I, what I saw. Let me see if I can find out um, while we're doing this. Uh, so okay, fun. So fun fact: this movie was so successful in Japan, it was submitted for best animated feature uh, for the Oscars, and it was not. It was not. Uh, I don't think it was nominated, but it was definitely submitted. Uh, you know, like I mentioned, this this blew away Spirited Away, which was the highest uh, grossing anime or animation or just highest grossing movie in. Uh, in Japan, um, let's see. North American release. Uh, okay, digital platforms will be released on June twenty second. 
uh, via Apple, Microsoft Voodoo, Google Play, PlayStation, except they already did it. Uh, so here we go. Yep. Uh, yeah, I I'm very excited uh, to, to see what you guys think of this movie. So let me know down in the comments. Uh, I can't wait for season two. And if in between seasons we can get a movie like this, and not just this, and there's a lot of manga with smaller side arcs that could be adapted to movies. So I think that would be really cool to have more canon movies in the anime because that is a way where you can bring in people that don't normally watch the anime, bring them into the anime. Uh, obviously, I'm going to keep reading the manga. Uh, I've read volume one and two, uh, and I'm going to keep reading try to get to this and then from there i'll make a decision depending on how far season two is i'll make a decision if i want to keep reading um to to read ahead because this manga is actually completely over so uh, you know I, I i can't go all the way to the end uh but yeah let me down in the, let me know in the comments uh have you watched this movie did you go to the theater uh don't let me know if you watched it any other way <laughs> just give us a thumbs thumbs up uh and like and, and you know share share with your friends uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this review. Uh, I'll be doing more reviews for things like this that whenever I can get to the theater uh, because <clears throat> it's it's an experience that I miss. I used to be at the theaters almost every weekend. So it's, it's definitely, it's a lot of fun to be able to go back. So thanks everyone for watching. This has been Daniel. Go watch some more anime. Uh, let me know what your favorite anime you're watching is. Uh, let us know what you like to cover. Uh, I'll probably do something for My Hero Academia Season 5 when it really wraps up. Unfortunately, I'm a dub watcher, so I'm behind. Um, yeah, thanks, everyone, and have a good day.